Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto Update. We're gonna look at Bitcoin and Cardano and touch on Ethereum today. We've had the extra dump, but there are good signs with what we're seeing at the moment. I wanna cover a couple of YouTube videos which have come out from other channels just to get through some of the FUD and explain what is going on here and then refer it back to the charts. So make sure you like the video up, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon. For the returning subscribers, you might note that this is a slightly different setting. I'm getting my office decked out with better audio equipment. So just waiting on that to get finished. Um, you guys, don't worry, this is not gonna be the permanent fixture here. We're gonna have fantastic audio. All right, without Further ado, let's dive into what I have here and Twitter is where I'm starting. I posted this just a couple of days ago. Everyone has been posting this over Twitter. This is a article that, well, at least some posts that came out from someone anonymous on uh, 4chan and basically it's telling us what exactly was going to happen at the exact time. Some people believe it. I tend to not believe it. I think it's just manipulation and it's basically like a couple of steps ahead of the game. Now, this is mentioned to us by Alex and I do enjoy his channel. Alex Becker talks a lot of crap. So if you can look past that, go enjoy his channel. Massive views on this video here, whales leak. Essentially, he's just looking at it like we're going two or three steps ahead when these posts come out. So if, if they are posting this is the manipulators, the whales, if they're posting this sort of stuff online, then they're obviously doing it for a reason. The whales are not going to tell retail what they are doing. That's why we use Wyckoff method to see what the whales are doing and we've been pretty good with it so far. And you're probably familiar with another Wyckoff method video that's gone viral over YouTube. So if you spend the time to learn about Wyckoff method, then you're going to do, make life a hell of a lot easier for yourself and be able to trade and invest risk-free because you're going to have to go against the crowd. And I'll show you that on the charts as well and join that together with the news that was coming out on YouTube. All of the, let's keep buying, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. So what we're piecing together here today is the news, the manipulative articles and pieces that come out online and then looking at it on the charts to show what is actually happening. The other thing I'll talk about as well is the risk to reward. I've also posted this on, on Twitter today saying that this is the best, best risk reward that I've seen on Bitcoin since December 2020. Some people are asking, what does that mean? So we'll look at that on the charts as well. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for your comments, letting me know that you are following along with the technical analysis and you're learning a hell of a lot and you're making gains. So let me know in the comments. I am reading all of them. If I, even if I can't get back to all of you guys down there, that's fantastic. That's what we wanted from the beginning and especially from the videos like the Wyckoff Method videos that went viral. We just want to help and make sure people can see what's going on before it happens. So these are the subscriptions here that I'm looking at. Looking at one from Sheldon Evans and then also primarily Alex Becker's video here. Um, Sheldon's gone through some, some news here, but essentially we want to get an idea of what the news means on the chart. And I bring up Sheldon's because he's always got some good news here of what's going on here with the crypto market. Here are the pieces to do with the, the manipulation. Alex has talked about it three steps ahead of the pack, meaning if they're going to tell us what's happening next, you know, we're going to go short and then dump it to 25. People are going to go, all right, well, let's do what they're doing. And we've seen it happen time and time again. Don't forget what happened with Dogecoin going to a dollar. It never did. Don't forget... Uh, XRP in February, it was around 1st of February, that was supposed to be uh, going up hundreds of Xs or whatever was going on then. But remember what happened just those couple of days before, even the few hours before, they dumped on the market. Use that to your advantage now moving forward. So when more of these posts come out, they're there to be used against you. So on to Bitcoin. <clears throat> what I see here on the chart, we were looking at many of these days here in particular, the 18th of April. This is all Wyckoff method. And 18th was a big day. If you're new to that, you haven't heard me say it before, go back and check out all the videos. But uh, for the returning guys, you know why this is so big. It's because the market sentiment changed on that day. We can tell that because the volume changed, the crash came in, there was uh, some lows, major lows here, well, kind of major at the time were taken out. And so that tells us that the market is selling and not looking to come back from that anytime soon, especially after we've got 11 straight days down. That has to become a catchphrase of mine. We're talking here 11 straight days down. 
everyone's buying these dips all this period here was buy the dip buy the dip buy the dip and this was a tell tail sign that we were going down so we've covered this many times we knew about that I wasn't buying. I wasn't sure if we'll get to this 70K because this was the time in the media, in the social media, that it was, let's go to 70. We're going to 80. It's happening. We're getting back there. Didn't come. Remember the people who were talking about that because I don't think they understand looking at a chart, um, comparing it to price and to volume. So really, really pay attention to the volume because that is what the people are actually doing. That's what the big money is doing. Pay attention to volume, which is down here. A couple of days ago, we had the massive crash. We're online. We're looking at it. It bounced back. Now, what we've seen today, the market's just closed about half an hour ago. Uh, we got to close almost dead on our 50% level. So 37,300. This is what I was talking about on uh, Twitter just a couple of days ago as we're getting this close on the 19th and then we closed above it. We've closed dead on it. We've seen another down day, but we haven't gone anywhere near as close to the scare, the capitulation day. And that's the important part here to note that we didn't get to our 30K level, but we got to 33.5K. But think about the news that's out today. The news today is around China banning uh, Bitcoin mining that isn't green and there's a lot that continues to play into that mentality, that scare. But the price didn't get lower. That's a very, very important point. I'm not saying that we can't go down further from here, but it might be on slower grounds. We might trickle down. Maybe we bounce back from here. The point is that even with the bad news, we didn't get lower. If you're not following a chart and you're looking at where the highs and the lows are, you probably will miss this. That's why even if you're not a, a, a chartist that has been following markets for years or months or you know have some experience, do you even just pull a chart out like this? It doesn't. You, you don't need to have that much experience. You just need to look at where the highs are. And if you want color on your candles, we can bring those out here. We just look at where the lows are. The wick got down to 30. We are at 33 and a half now. So tons and tons of bad news could not get us that low. That's important. So we keep tracking the market from here. Now, the, the thing to note with this extra crash, I'm going to bring it back to the bars. <clears throat> We're going to look at the capitulation that happened in March of 2020. Even if you weren't in cryptocurrency, which we know the majority of people weren't in cryptocurrency back then because these were the lows, you still remember what happened in the news. Everyone in the world should remember what happened in the news in March of 2020. This was the end of the world. This was when COVID was breaking out everything started shutting down, flights were cancelled, airlines couldn't run, uh, um, supply streams were, supply distribution chains were getting cut off and it was supposed to be the end of the world. So at this point, what happened? That was the low. Then we had a couple of days of trying to figure out what was going on, just letting the dust settle. Then we had more bad news on the 16th. If you want to research this for yourself, you want to put that time in, Go into the 16th of March, into Google, 16th of March, news announcements, COVID, get a Google search and you'll see the news that's coming out those days. Then from that point, the market never saw that price again. That's the important part. Heaps of volume came in. All of the support was coming in at around $5,000. It dipped briefly to 3,800, came all the way back into the 5Ks and it only spent a matter of hours in the 4Ks. Why am I focusing so much on the COVID crash? It's because this is the closest thing that we can see to what is happening now. And the result from this extreme news crash, I would say this news was far more extreme than what we're currently seeing now on Bitcoin. Uh, if you disagree, let me know in the comments, but I think a worldwide shutdown is far, far more extreme oh, that China's banning Bitcoin mining. Balance those pieces of news out in your own mind. And now let's get back to where we are all the way back here in uh, currently in May. I think this is a very good opportunity to be buying more Bitcoin. I'm not talking about other cryptos at this point in time. We need to take them case by case. And Bitcoin is the God market. So we are going to focus on Bitcoin. What I am looking at in terms of the risk reward, as I mentioned on this tweet here, it's going crazy. Uh, risk reward hasn't looked this good since December. Check this out. Okay, so December is in here. So November, late November, early December. Risk reward just means what is the downside compared to the potential upside. Now, I see the downside from December 
only to these these levels at this point here. So I saw it maybe 30% at worst, just coming back to test these old highs. And then probably more so this little peak here in the $13,000 level. So somewhere around 30% down to about 35%. So that's the downside, that's the risk. The reward is infinite. It's infinitely higher than where it currently is. Yes, there are gonna be massive drawdowns as well, that could have been the top because it's a double top, but I still saw the upside as being a lot more. I did not think that this $4,000 level would break. And we have to use extreme numbers here on Bitcoin because it is a young market and it fluctuates. It's very, very volatile. So if we're getting in on the breakout, which is the momentum trade, you want to buy something and then get into profit straight away, you're going to buy after it crosses $20,000. Most people like to do that uh, so that they're not sitting in a profit, uh, a loss for a day or two. And that's what newbies understand uh, they just want to get a profit as soon as they buy something but prices can go down they will they can go down first so don't worry about that you just want to look at what your risk is so that you know a level that you are comfortable for the market to go down to before it turns around or the level that will go down to and crash through and you say look I'm out because the conditions have changed okay so this point it can go a lot further. If it crashes through that low, you're screwed. You know, 80% off, but I really, really highly doubt it. So you've got to take these measured moves and understand what's going on. Uh, take a bit of an educated guess. This is important to understand where we are now to be able to be looking at one of the best times to be buying. So there is still downside. It can still go down. It can go down a lot further than we can emotionally handle. But as long as you've got this written down and you have a plan, you'll be able to look back to the black and whiteness on that paper when you made the decision at the time with a clearer mind, if your mind is not clear, it's going to be you're going to screw yourself either in either situation. So there's a downside. Upside, we just can keep drawing this line up. You know, there's calls of a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin, two hundred, three hundred, five hundred from Ark Invest. So just do your risk reward up that way. Bring the chart all the way up to let's go to a hundred and two hundred thousand. This was the entry point. A hundred K is right here at around a four hundred percent. Two hundred K is at around 900%, let's go a little bit higher and we go for a thousand percent return, you know, at 220K. So the upside is, is huge compared to the downside. Now, let's get back to the point that we're at here at around 37,000. There can still be downside. The downside here, we're at 37K. Say we go to this low again at 30K or 28,800. The downside then is about 23%, 22%. Say we break through that and things get really bad for a long period of time, an extended period, another year at these levels. And we go back down to test the swing before we broke out, which is around 22, 23K, 38% down. Now, if we go back to the old high, the old bull market high of $20,000, which we also saw um, some resistance on in December, then that's a 48% loss. And we go and test the lows of that area, okay, 52-ish percent. We break through that. We're testing everything here so that we have a plan. This is how I'm putting a plan together to get our understanding of a risk reward. Downside to that, 67, 70%. All right. That's what we were looking at from the December period. Downside to those highs, 40,000. To the beneath those highs, 50,000. To these lows, 70,000, uh, 70%. <laughs> so we're somewhere between our 20, 30 to around 70%. And 70% is off. You know, the market has something fundamentally has broken if we take out those lows of 4,000 or even I think these lows in the 20s, something fundamentally has broken for the short term and it's not a position to be in. So <clears throat> that's if the market continues to uh, consolidate in those low areas. That's what I'm talking about when I mentioned this is the best, best risk reward I've seen on Bitcoin since December of 2020. Up here at these highs when everyone's buying in and they're all excited, let's use a cleaner chart. These levels up here where the purple is, this is where retail is buying because they keep buying when the news is coming out so that everyone feels safe. The retail work like sheep. They go in herds and they just keep buying up into these highs and then they get dumped on. Then they keep buying these highs. They come out when everything is looking safe, all right, and they get dumped on. And so then you're holding these positions between 50 and 60,000 and then this happens down to 30, it scares the hell out of you. But if you're seasoned and you can manage your nerves because you've got a plan at least, then the downsides aren't going to scare you as much as a 20% drop or, or a 50% drop to these highs. You know, so this is the real downside that I see. But now we can see an upside into the same areas that we we're looking at from December 
and we're looking at 100K, there's 170, 180% to 100K. And then if we go to 200K, bring this out. So we're at around 37 grand, come up to 200K, 430%. A little higher, like we're looking around 220, 480. So somewhere in 400, 500%. That's far better returns than if we were buying like the sheep were at 58K, buy all those dips up there. 57k up to our 100k is only going to give you a 70%. So you're looking to make 70% up to the 100k with a potential downside of 30 to 50%. Remember that. That's not a good risk reward buying those highs with the downside. Now I'm saying you could, the that that's not a good risk reward because there was no pullback in this whole region. So there is always going to be a pullback and it's not going to be this super cycle, never see a bigger pullback than 40%, nonsense, absolute nonsense. And it just keeps people buying the highs. So buying in these levels, then up to 200K, 240%. So you have to hold on a lot longer with a lot less risk. Oh, sorry, a lot less reward because now that we can buy at 30K, we've doubled our reward at the same price of 200K. So if you bought the highs, you're only getting 240%. If you're buying now, still there's a downside potential, but now your upside, instead of it being 240%, it's 480%. So you've doubled your upside. Yes, because the market has dropped by half. So that's what I mean by the risk reward, but there is still risk and you just have to be comfortable with that. So don't put in more than you are willing to, I guess, lose 50% of and that you can sleep and that you're not going to say, how much is this price going to be at the end of June? Because I need to take it out to buy a car or a house or pay tax. That is is not the way to be planning out your investment portfolio, especially with something that has such big upside potential. Set and forget is a good way. Buying cheap is a good way. And essentially that's what I was doing with my super fund portfolio through these areas, which you can find on my Instagram. So go and follow my Instagram, Twitter as well. You can follow that. If you don't have it, news, it's so much easier to get quick news out to you guys over there. And then on Instagram, I answer your Q and A's over there. So that's Bitcoin. That's where I was buying for my retirement fund, my super fund because I could see that this was massive capitulation and the market just kept climbing up and no higher lows. So we have to wait to see the higher lows to see whether we are going up. But in terms of a risk reward, I'd much rather be buying at 5,000 with the potential of it going lower than waiting for it and waiting for it and waiting for it to break some highs. Different plays here. You've got to be comfortable with either. Now, before I go, let's have a look at Cardano and where that's sitting. We are at $1.50 and the benefit, the beauty here is that we are still consolidating above the old highs. So that's what I wanted to update you guys on for Cardano. It's still looking all right. We're bouncing around here. The volume is just starting to drop off a bit, which is good. We've just got some inside days. We haven't seen any breaks of the highs, which is important. We want to see some breaks of highs <clears throat> and not too many breaks of lows. So keep a look out on your charts. Still above these old highs. That's good stuff. Now, quick look at ethereum the other biggie 2400 we have slipped down again not looking as strong as cardano but at least we're still within these zones and we're not breaking back into the uh, 1300 to 2k zone so we'll update this in another video because this video is long enough and uh, keep up to date subscribe to the channel bell notification icon we've got another video coming out on this tomorrow cryptocurrency daily updates to uh, hopefully keep you guys safe and stress-free with your investing. Remember, if you found some value, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon so you're updated. Make sure you do that, click them down below. I'll see you on Instagram for Q and A's. I've got some more to answer today as well. So make sure you get over there and uh, type in your questions. Twitter for news updates, heaps easier to get to you guys over there. Join the newsletter if you wanna learn about this. It's free once a week, once every two weeks. Link to that is down below. You get to know about cryptocurrency and finance and uh, investing in general, property cycle, so much over there. Uh, I'll catch you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done. <laughs>